What's up guys, so I just recently got back from the Son of Monster Palooza Horror Convention in Burbank, California, and in this video I'm going to be telling you what my experience was like at the convention, and of course, as you probably saw from the thumbnail of this video, my experience meeting Bruce Campbell from the Evil Dead franchise. So I've been going to Son of Monster Palooza for the past two years now, and to this day, it's one of my favorite horror conventions to go to. I don't know, I just really seem to dig the ambiance of this place. So obviously I was really excited to go go back this year, and not just because of Bruce Campbell, but the guest lineup in general. I don't know what the hell happened this year, but the guest lineup for this convention was f crazy, especially for a smaller convention like this. So me and my dad get to this convention around 8.30 a.m., which is about two and a half hours before it actually starts. And the reason why we got there so early is because we knew Bruce Campbell's line was going to be outrageous. <laughs> Boy, was it. So we get in line, and as we wait in line for the next two and a half hours, I decided to get a glimpse at the cool cosplays. There was this one guy dressed up as Santa Claus Art the Clown, because, you know, Terrifier 3 had just come out. There was also this one guy who's referring referred to as the walking monster and he's kind of like the official monster palooza mascot because he's pretty much at every monster palooza and of course because bruce campbell was in attendance there were a ton of ash cosplays so anyways 11 o'clock rolled around meaning it was finally time to open the doors and as soon as i got in i immediately sprinted to bruce campbell's line so I get in line, and there's already a good amount of people ahead of us, but I'm like, okay, this isn't terrible, we should be able to get this out of the way. But then 10 minutes later, his manager walks up and points to the guy in front of us and says, Hey guys, so from this point, we're gonna have to stop the line because Bruce has to go do photo ops. So from this point, our chances of getting Bruce's autograph were not looking very good. And the reason why is because we actually had a photo op schedule with him, which meant we had to get out of line and come back later in the day. So we get out of line, and... Now we actually have some time to kill because our photo op isn't for another 30 minutes. So to pass the time, I decided I wanted to go meet Eli Roth because he happened to be right next door to Bruce Campbell and his line was significantly shorter. So I go up to his handler and give him $120, so I'm like, well, there goes a third of my budget for the day. And I walk up to Eli Roth and I give him my 4K of Inglorious Bastards. And I tell him, hey, this was the first Quentin Tarantino movie I ever saw. And he actually told me a story of how Tarantino likes it when people watch his movies and chronological order, meaning you start with Reservoir Dogs, then go to Pulp Fiction, then Jackie Brown, etc. Anyway, so we then get our picture, and then I end the conversation by telling him I'm excited for Thanksgiving 2, and yeah, that was pretty much it. I'd say, honestly, he was a pretty cool dude, but he definitely seemed kind of tired when I talked to him. Like, he wasn't exactly the most energetic person, but I'm not gonna blame that on him. Anyway, so now that I have met Eli Roth, it was officially time to get our photo with Bruce. So we walk over to the photo op area and get in line for our photo op. And while we were waiting in line, I actually did manage to get a video of Bruce walking over to the photo op area. So, uh, here you go. So for our photo op, I actually brought a copy of Bruce's autobiography, which is called If Chins Could Kill. And my goal for this photo op was to have Bruce hold the book and all pretend like we were reading it. So that's what we did. So once it was finally time for our photo op, we walked up to Bruce, we shook hands with him, I handed the book to him, and he told me and my dad to make a funny pose as we read the book. And so once that was done, we walked out and got our picture. And I gotta say, the picture turned out really great. Like, as soon as we picked it up, I actually started cackling with joy because of how satisfied I was with it. Definitely worth the 50 bucks if you ask me. So now that the photo op was taken care of, we decided to catch a glimpse of the Return of the Living Dead Q&A panel. And it was definitely a pretty standard standard Q&A, but I gotta say, the highlight was definitely when the actor who plays the tar man, Alan Troutman, did a demonstration of the iconic walk he does in the movie, and to quote what he said, without the makeup, it kind of looked like an old man with a busted pelvis. So once that was over, we decided to go meet the actors from Return of the Living Dead, and overall, all of them were really cool. Miguel Nunez was a f***ing blast, Linnea Quigley was incredibly nice, Tom Matthews was really awesome, as was Alan Troutman and Beverly Randolph. The only one one that seemed a little bit off-putting to me was Jewel Shepard. I don't know, her responses just seemed kind of AI-generated, to be honest. It was almost like her brain was being controlled by ChatGPT. Either that, or maybe the Tarman got to her brains. 
But yeah, I'd say we had positive experiences with all of them. If you haven't seen Return of the Living Dead, I highly recommend it. It's a very good movie. So after that, we decided to go take a look at the vendors. And as per usual, there was some pretty cool stuff to look at. There was this one guy that was selling like these South Park collectibles for some reason, which I thought was kind of funny. We got to see some live makeup demos, which is always a highlight of Monster Palooza. And we also checked out this booth called the Nerd's Nest Collectibles. And they even had a couple special guests at their table. Mark Torgel and Jennifer Aspinall from the Toxic Avenger. If you've never heard of the Toxic Avenger, it's basically like this superhero horror comedy where like this janitor guy falls into a barrel of toxic waste and becomes this like giant superhero guy. It's a f***ing buck wild movie, but it's actually a lot of fun. So after exploring the vendors for a little bit, I decided to take a little break at the courtyard. And that's where I happened to run into my friend Lindsay. And you know, we're just chatting like friends normally do. But then all of a sudden she tells me something I was not expecting to hear at all. She said that Bruce Campbell's line had been permanently capped. And I was like, are you serious right now? And sure enough, when I go back to Bruce Campbell's line, there was a group of volunteers that were in fact saying Bruce Campbell's line was permanently capped for the rest of the day, which meant my chances of getting an autograph from him that day were now zero to none. But I tried not to let it get the best of me though, so instead I decided to go say hello to two other gentlemen that I was just as excited to meet as I was for Bruce, that being David Naughton and Griffin Dunn from the movie An American Werewolf in London, which, for those of you who don't know, that's my favorite horror movie of all time. I first saw that movie when I I was only 10 years old and was immediately captivated by its great humor and unbelievable makeup effects. So if you had told that 10 year old kid that one day he would get to meet the two main stars from the movie, he would have lost his shit. And yet the 10 year old kid in me that day was definitely satisfied. So I got my poster signed and then it was time to do a photo op with them. And the photo op was pretty much exactly like how it was with Bruce. You go up, take a picture with the celebrity, and then you pick up your photo. And well, here's the one we did with the American Werewolf guys. And I gotta say this one also came out great. But then, yeah, after that, our day was pretty much done. I decided to go chill in the hotel lobby after that and maybe catch a glimpse of Ozzy Osbourne doing his photo ops. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, the motherfucking Prince of Darkness himself, Ozzy Osbourne, was at this convention as well. But I had no intentions of meeting him because he was charging $700 just to meet him. And I guess they figured out that was a bad idea because the next day they let regular general admission people meet them without paying for that VIP ticket. But I wasn't able to go that day so, oh well. So in the end, although I'm still bitter about not getting Bruce Campbell's autograph, I still gotta process the fact that I actually finally met him. Like, I can finally cross that off my bucket list. And even though our interaction with him was super brief, Bruce was still an incredibly cool dude. Hopefully I'll have the opportunity to meet him again one day, but who knows when that's gonna happen. So yeah, that was my experience with Bruce Campbell. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys had the opportunity to meet Bruce. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing because it would really help my channel out. Let's see if we can try to hit 500 subscribers by the end of the year. We're actually kind of close, so I think we can do it. But for now, that's all I got for you guys. Bye.